Good afternoon, everyone. Rich Gonzalez from PrepCal Track in Southern California. A very windy day today. The winds have changed also. Southern section, Sac Joaquin section, LA city section had updates as well as the state office in pertaining to postseason for cross country. First off, the Southern section, the largest section in California, announced that there will be no postseason for cross country this year. Announcement already of no state meet, now no section prelims, no section finals either. The LA City section, they announced that currently they do have plans to still hold their section championships at the end of March. The Sac Joaquin section in the Sacramento area previously announced there also would be no Southern, there'll be no cross country postseason. So once again, Southern and Sac Joaquin, no postseason for cross country. LA City, currently they do plan to have a postseason. Also, the CF State Office sent out a notice to all member schools that any sort of participation whatsoever during stay at home orders violating any sort of a California Department of Health public health guideline could subject schools to either fines, suspension by CIF, or expulsion from CIF. That was done in response to recently a couple of schools got together and did unauthorized, unsanctioned head-to-head -head football games. Those were found upon immediately. We'll touch upon club sports in a, in a short while. But for right now, CIF finally becoming very clear and stating this is not allowed. So any schools that want to try and do something on the down low, you're risking uh, CF membership. So that would be a very, very bad move. Okay, so as far as today's announcements, what does it really mean for cross country? Well, I already explained some of these sections, no postseason. However, you can still possibly down the road do dual meets, small league meets, even potentially invitationals so long as those meets are done within any state or county public health guidelines. Currently, most of California is in a stay-at-home order. So for instance, the schools that I mentioned already, as far as the Southern section, LA City, those right now cannot have any sort of competition. There were a lot of coaches who were not reading material carefully online who thought that because cross country is a purple tier sport, once January 25th rolls around, we can have meets. No, the California stay at home order for certain regions supersedes that. So even if cross country is purple tier, which is the lightest, which is the lightest of the tiers, the worst for the health situation, but the lightest in terms of requirements on sports, even if we have the day 25th and cross country's purple tier, you cannot go ahead and do any sort of interscholastic or school versus school competitions because we're still under the stay at home order. So that's the very first thing. Once those orders are lifted, which in all honesty will probably not happen anytime soon, realistically our best bet, and this is a real stretch, would be late February. That's a real stretch. Possibly March, uh, if people really get their act together if the numbers come down. Uh, we haven't seen that in the past several months, uh, but I do think there is a decent chance of that. And we'll touch upon a bit more on that uh, down the road. Uh, also, in terms of past competitions, as some of you know, we've had some schools from California that opened up club teams and they compete as club teams across state lines, whether it be in Arizona, whether it be in Washington, New York, Indiana, Virginia, a number of states that we've had schools set up clubs, I shouldn't say schools, we've had coaches or parents set up clubs and then travel as a club team to compete in club competition. People are saying, how can that be done? You gotta remember, when the first shutdown happened in March, we had a certain set of guidelines from the State Department happening. Then, those, then the stay at home order was lifted. During the summertime, during the fall, some of these guidelines kept changing. And as they kept changing, some of them, some of the conditions allowed for club teams to travel across state lines. Now, as these conditions continue to evolve, conditions change where at some point in time, if you travel out of state, then when you came back across state lines, you had a quarantine for 14 days. Were some club teams doing that? I don't know, you can have your own opinion on that. But now we're back in stay at home order, so now the restrictions are quite tight. Really there is nothing allowed in terms of interscholastic, meaning school versus school competition at this point. And no, there are no club teams allowed at this point. As far as competition under the state guidelines, there are no youth programs that are allowed, same thing. So we're all in the same boat here. 
So if you have some private coach who's saying, no, we can't go ahead and do this and we can't do that, they're leading you down the wrong path. Uh, there was a pretty popular club football group that's been gathering at one field in Southern California. Pretty horrendous looking field as far as unsafe, but that person appears to be lining his pockets with money on entry fees, but it is something that is illegal. It's in violation of that county's health code order. So again, avoid those for right now. The key thing is to try and be safe during this pandemic as far as staying in. Uh, a couple of other things. The big thing I'm hearing across the country and all across California, obviously, is, wait a minute, why is California not having sports when this sport and that sport, or I'm sorry, this state and that state did have cross country, did have football and so forth? Okay, if we did have cross country in California, it's not like we're gonna have a kid running a race and then during the race, because of COVID, they're gonna fall over and die. That wasn't happening here, it wouldn't happen here, it wasn't happening elsewhere. That's not how the virus works. However, the key thing you've gotta keep in mind is, these states that were having sports, their whole communities were opened up. Right now, they are suffering big time in terms of per capita death rates, per capita hospitalizations. Now you're probably saying, wait a minute, California's horrendous as well. Well, let's look at the data. There were six states in the United States that did not have any sort of cross country this year. California, Hawaii, Virginia, Washington, Oregon, and North Carolina. North Carolina just recently started and their state meet is this coming weekend. But the other 44 states either, either had a full season or they got partway through and didn't have a state meet or got partway through and had a cancel. But here's the key thing. Of those six states that did not have any cross country, those six states all ranked among the lowest 13 in the country in deaths per capita, deaths per 100,000. California currently, even with its massive population, the largest state in the nation by far, 39 million residents. But in terms of per capita, California out of the 50 states ranks 37th out of 50 in the death rate during COVID-19 per capita. And in something like this, you want to be on the low end, not the high end. But those six states were all between 37 and 50. So even though there was a lot of economic damage done, and there's definitely a lot of other tolls with kids that are not socializing with friends and so forth, there's a big toll on that. Those states that did shut down are the ones that are far less in terms of the death rate. And you're saying, well, what does that really mean in the big picture? Well, if you compare California, for instance, you compare our population and our per capita death rates, and then you also translate that over how the rest of the nation is doing on average, on average, if we would have opened up in California and had sports and our sports would, and, our, and those states would have had the same percentage of death rates as the national average, between 30 to 40,000 more people in California would have died if we were more open, which of course means also sports happening. So even though there's a big trade-off, at the same time, undoubtedly there were lives that were also saved. So that's one thing to keep in mind. That's, I know, understand it's a very political things on both sides and we're sure taking a big hit in California. Uh, but at the same time, for a state of our size, for our death rates to be as low as they are, even though our total numbers are enormous, again, because our population, our per capita is much lower than most of the rest of the country, substantially lower in the, than the worst, for instance, New York, New Jersey, almost three times as bad as California on death rates per capita. Uh, a couple other things, and just in wrapping up real quick. First off, the announcements today, were no, they were no surprises. I think in the last few weeks, the last few months, more and more coaches, more and more kids were beginning to expect this. They saw the delays and they've seen what's been on the news. In reality, this was something that looked like it was gonna happen way back when. Uh, those in my innermost circle, back in March, I was telling them we probably would have our cross country season affected to some degree. Once we hit deeper in the summertime, it became more apparent that there was too much mobility going on. Once we hit September, I personally, in September, Unfortunately, I personally had already kissed off any chance of cross country. It wasn't gonna happen. As, as soon as I saw what the mobility was during Labor Day, I knew it would only get worse during Thanksgiving, Christmas, and so forth. 
And because our state was going to follow the data, I knew that was going to end cross country. So, and sure enough, today that became official. Then now what we're at is track and field. The big question is, well, what about track and field? Track and field is supposed to start in the last 10 days of March. We're not too far away from that right now. I do expect the numbers to begin to start coming down. Will it come down fast enough it remains to be seen. If I'm a betting man, I think we have a track and field start possibly a little bit late. I do think we are going to have a track and field season. I do think we will have some form of invitationals so long as schools sign off on basically doing extra work, taking on some liability and doing that. There's a definite risk. It comes down to over these next four to six to eight to ten weeks, how well we as a society get this whole problem under control or try and rein it in a little bit. With vaccinations, that obviously helps. There's a lot going on, but I am optimistic for track and field to some degree. I do think it may start a bit later. I'm hoping it starts on time. It may very well happen. Uh, in all honesty, I think within about three weeks, we'll have an idea, a pretty good idea, as to what our chances are for starting track and field on time. It may look different, maybe smaller meets, maybe longer days because stretching out kids going in and out of the competition area. But if we don't have track and field, it's because something went very, very wrong and people basically kissed off the guidelines. For cross country, after Labor Day, I was expecting that. I was already convinced people were gonna blow that off when we we're gonna have a season, and that's what happened. For track and field, from the get-go, I've had more hope for track and field 2021. I still do, but it's gonna really come down to how well people cooperate in these coming few weeks, these coming couple of months. So please, as far as any sort of stuff with club teams, traveling across state lines, so forth, no, it is illegal. Don't go ahead and do that. If coaches try and get you to do that, no. All you're doing is you're just pushing away forever across track and field 2021. Cross country, I knew that was gonna happen. Track and field, we have a chance, a good chance. Uh, but again, we need to be more responsible. All right, that's about it. I know a lot to digest. Hopefully you learned something. Thanks so much.